Refrigerant 134A flows through a throttle. It enters as a saturated liquid at 700 kilopascal and leaves at 160 kilopascal. Find the temperature drop of the refrigerant and find the specific volume at the exit of the throttle. So our illustration for this problem shows a throttle. And let's just let point 1 represent the inlet and point 2 represent the exit from this particular throttle. Um, now we're told that at point 1 we have a pressure of 700 kilopascals and that 1 is a saturated liquid. And we're given at point 2 that the pressure is 160 kilopascals. No other information is given at point 2. What we're trying to find is the temperature drop of the refrigerant. So we're trying to find the difference between the inlet and the exit temperature. And we're also trying to find the specific volume, which is V2. Now, this is clearly a single stream steady flow problem. And the first law of thermodynamics for these types of problems tells us that heat transfer minus the work equals the change in enthalpy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Now, throttles are rather small devices. <clears throat> the amount of heat transfer is generally negligible. Uh, perhaps this problem could have been written stating that it's an adiabatic throttle or a well-insulated throttle, um, but we're going to assume that the heat transfer is zero, as typical of a throttle. Also, there's no work of any kind associated with this device, so the work term is zero. Um, with regard to the kinetic energy change, we know nothing about the pipe size at the inlet or at the exit from the throttle, so there's no way that we can find the velocity, um, nor do we know the mass flow rate. So our only choice is to simply assume that the kinetic energy change is zero. <clears throat> and then lastly, um, we'll have to assume that there's a negligible height change. Again, we have no information about the geometry of this device, so the potential energy change is zero. So basically this just tells me that my first law equation for this single stream steady flow process is just H2 minus H1 equals zero or H1 equals H2. So this is the version of the first law. Now <clears throat> we're given the inlet state. We have pressure in that it's a saturated liquid, so H1 is just going to be HF, and that then allows me to find H2, since it equals to H1. Once I have H2, um, I know two properties at the discharge, right? I know the pressure and the enthalpy at state point 2. So with two thermodynamic properties, I should be able to go back into my property tables and look up anything else I need, um, including the temperature and specific volume, and therefore we should be able to very easily solve this problem. So let's just begin. Um, let's find some data. So at P1, as a saturated liquid, um, this is refrigerant 134A, so that means we're going to use table A12, and that's going to allow me to find the enthalpy H1, which is HF for saturated liquid, as 88.82 degrees Celsius. Um, additionally, we're going to need the temperature at this point, so T1 is just the saturation temperature. So this is listed in the second column of that table, 26.69 degrees Celsius. Oh, I have the wrong units above. Let me fix that. All right, so now we have our <coughs> enthalpy and temperature at the inlet with the appropriate units. Now again, H1 is equal to H2. It's a throttle. So now at the exit conditions at H2 and P2, um, here we're not sure what the thermodynamic state is. Um, it could be superheated, in which case we're going to stay in table A12, or it could be a two-phase mixture. Um, what we're going to find, though, is that H2 is actually between HF and HG, so clearly it's a two-phase mixture, and as such, we're going to have to use table A11 data. Now, if we have a two-phase mixture, what we'll do is we'll use our enthalpy data to find the quality, and then once we have the quality, we'll use that quality in order to find the specific volume. As such, we're going to have to write out some more information. So um, at point 2, um, HF 
and HFG are going to be required. Um, HF is 31.18 kilojoules per kilogram, and HFG is 209.96 kilojoules per kilogram. Um, additionally, we're going to need some specific volume data, so VF is going to be 0 0.000. 7435 and we're also going to need VFG but the textbook doesn't actually give us data for VFG like it does HFG or UFG um, so we're going to have to use the difference between VG and VF so let's also write down VG here then um, and that's 0.12355 and both of these are in cubic meters per kilogram so now we're able to continue the problem. Once again, we have all the data we need. So let's take that enthalpy data and find the quality. So H2, which equals H1, which equals 88.82 kilojoules per kilogram. This is going to equal HF plus the quality at 2 times HFG. Um, we just plug in the data from above into the equation below. Uh, the only unknown is the quality, and we get that the quality at the exit is 0.2745. And then once we have the quality, then we plug it into the appropriate equation for specific volume. V2 equals VF plus the quality at 2 times VFG, in other words, VG minus VF. So here, we just take the specific volume data from above. And we also take the quality from directly above, uh, plug these into the equations, and we get 0 0.0345 meters cubed per kilogram. And the problem is solved. I guess there's really one last step. Uh, we have yet to find the change in temperature. Um, up above, when I found that other data at state point 2, I should have also indicated that the temperature at point 2 is the saturation temperature. Again, it's a two-phase mixture, so the temperature is saturation temperature. And this is um, minus 15.6 degrees Celsius. So now we can find the temperature difference. So T1 minus T2 is just going to equal 26.69 temperature at point 1 minus T2 which is a negative 15.6 these are both in Celsius and that gives me the total temperature drop of 42.3 degrees Celsius and now the problem is really solved